Captain and Pangella too. And our host, Vincent Van Gogh. And he brings it to ya! Creature features and all creatures. Livingston, fathom this. Ernest Borgnine, Walter Pigeon, Ben Gazzara, and even the lovely Yvette Mimieux, all in the same film about a deep sea diving rescue. Sounds like another implausible storyline for yet another ludicrous film. That's right! No, that's not right. But first, the salutations. Good evening and welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent. The man with little enthusiasm for the blockbuster films we feature on this very program would be my otherwise unopinionated butler, Mr. Livingston. And the lovely little flippity gibbet over to the side would be my daintily dangerous housemate, the winsome Miss Tangella. And we have a fantastic show in store just for you. First, as previously hinted, we shall present for your viewing pleasure a remarkable film from 1973 entitled The Neptune Factor. This film contains an abundance of adventure and numerous sea monsters, while coupled with a cornucopia of mystery and suspense. What's more, this film is one of Tangela's most favorites since she personally requested it. I see. Tangela says that she actually requested the Poseidon adventure, and we received this film instead. She also adds that we should stop ordering our movies from Wish. In any case, I like this film, and I hope that you will as well. And who might be our guest tonight, Mr. Livingston? The Undertaker. Again. Oh, wonderful. He is so informative. Not to be confused with wrestler Mark Calloway, our Undertaker guest is a real Undertaker, who not only continues the fine tradition of Victorian-era mortician work, but knows a good deal about these old gems we screen as well. So don't go away for this to be another night of underwater and undertaking fright right here on Creature Features. Stay tuned. Mr. Undertaker, did you know that on Channel 9 at this very moment is Monty Python's Flying Circus? And the description is as follows. A look at a program called Blood, Devastation, Death, War, and Horror featuring a man who speaks exclusively in anagrams. Oh, sounds I'm like a good... Looking forward to seeing that one. My favorite one is the row of Undertakers carrying a coffin. Oh, that's right. No, that was uh, definitely a Monty Python thing. Welcome to Creature Features. Give me another fun night because we've got a great guest, a great film, and a great audience. That would be you. And you're the great guest. Thank you. This is The Undertaker. You may have recalled him from previous episodes. What was the last film we showed when you were on? Oh, boy. I can't remember the film. I remember when I was It on, was an though. old prune. Right, it was a sci-fi movie, I know was that it? much. Was it? Right, no, it's some old prune. This is not as old. No. Neptune Factor. This is 1973. And Ernest Borgnine's in it, and he did right. the Poseidon Adventure in 1973. Right, but before that, he did McHale's Navy. Yes, he did. And then he did, what was that movie he was in that made him famous? Uh, Marty. Marty, right. So he's, he's, a, he's a good thespian. 
Yes, he was. Right, right. Now we got a Walter Pigeon. Walter Pigeon. An Yvette Mimieu. Oh, yes, from the yeah. Time Machine. She just died recently. Yes, she did. Yeah, no, but she had a long life, 80 years old, 80-something. So. And quite a career. Right. So anyways, we're going to talk about your career. We're going to talk about Undertaking. We're going to talk about Hearst's. We're going to talk about uh, all the other stuff and, of course, the film. So what Wonderful. do you think? Should we get it started? Yes. All right, off we go to the Neptune Factor. Don't you dare change it to Channel 9 and watch Monty Python. I guarantee you it will be funnier. That's a lie. See you soon.
Yes, sir, Bill. Everything's all set outside there for the next team coming down. First thing you know, you'll be calling up your real estate boys. <laughs> Starting to set up all your factories, high rises, the works. Start right in polluting. <laughs> yeah. A bonanza of opportunity. Yeah, for everybody except swimming pool salesmen. <laughs> Here. Rest and recreate, Mac. You've earned it. Haven't you learned yet, buddy? You just can't do both at the same time. <laughs> How you doing, old man? You know, a few gray hairs don't count, Doc. It's what a man has in here. That's why we're taking this electrocardiogram. What's bugging you, Mac? Stevens. Oh, yeah. What are you gonna do, fire him? I'm afraid I'll have to. Excuse me, Doc. But I want this man taken off my team. I'm sorry, Stevens. Come on, Mac. So I pop my cork. One of these days, it's going to hit somebody. You're trying to knock me out of a hundred dollar an hour job. No. Stevens, you just don't have the temperament for this kind of work. It's not up to you, Mac. I think it is. Especially when he tried to hit his buddy with a wrench. I'm sorry, Stevens. I'll see you. Hey, let's go. Look, Doc. You make the rules. It's your word who works down here. Well, you and Thomas go up as soon as you're ready. I'll be on deck tomorrow morning. We can go over it then. See you guys up there. Bye. Leah? Don McKay and Bob Cousins up in two stages. A minimum time and decom for the test. Okay, Hal. Is Dr. Andrews there, Leah? Bill Bradley wants some last minute instructions. Dr. Andrews? Uh-huh. Thank you. Andrews here. Have Bradley send up some more manganese nodules, will you please? Corporate request from Mr. Shepard. Engineer Bradley here. The corporation has spoken. I wonder if Einstein meant his theory of relativity to encompass the relativity of beauty. Has anyone ever observed, Dr. Andrews, that you have a very fishy way of flirting with the ladies? A decompression chamber, too. The divers are on deck, Dr. Andrews, Mac and Cousins. Andrews here. You two all right? Yeah, we're all 
this trip really necessary, Doc? <laughs> For the test of that last breathing mixture. You waited two stages coming up, right? Yeah, we're growing gills. Be the first in your neighborhood. Take them down to 50 feet. We can dispense with conservative decompression. Take it in easy stages. Well, I guess maybe I should have stood up for more, but... Uh... It wouldn't have made any difference, Tom. Max Wright, he's not cut out for the job. Yeah, I know, but he was planning on getting married this time up. Girl coming over from England. Well, there's no law that says he can't. Have a good time ashore. Thanks. These are good. Well, Leah likes her specimens alive. Yeah, well, nobody can say you don't qualify on that count. Okay, Brad, he's off. Now, oh, come on, Hal. When are you and Leah gonna get together? As soon as she says yes. Sometimes I think I'd be better off just to forget the whole thing. Uh, see you up top, fellas. There's an awful lot of dialogue in this film. Talky, 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 yes. You know, there was a stage where, a decade, where the films, it seemed like dialogue was everything. It was like script writer's paradise. Yes, it was. It's like, more words, please, sir. And I think the actors uh, would have appreciated more action in an action film. It's an action film, exactly. It's right. supposed to be an action film, but maybe it's like a mouth action film. Oh, like definitely. A, right, right. Anyways, we'll get back to that in a moment. But um, Undertaker, so for people who have never seen you prior, how would we describe The Undertaker other than the obvious description of an Undertaker? Well, I am the champion of the undead. I'm undead myself. That's nice. Yeah, I am the purveyor of the perverse, the uh, manager of the macabre. All right. And the editor of the Eldritch World. And you fit all this on your business card. Certainly, because it has two sides. No, you use a tiny font. That too. Right, right. So, Undertaking. How does one get into Undertaking? Uh, I was born into it and I died into it. So, oh. it was a family profession. A family. No, it, it would have to be a family profession, right? I mean, right. It's not, is there like a mortuary college? There is. Oh, all right. There's a clown college, Santa Claus college, of course. mortuary college. There needs yes. to be a mortuary. More people die than go to the circus, I believe. I believe that's true. Right, Some right. people die at the circus as well. And so your daily driver is a hearse. That's correct. You know, I almost bought a hearse once and I did not. Do you know why? Why? I did not like the smell. Oh. And yes. it was not the smell of corpse and death or anything like that. It had this strange plastic smell that I've only seen emanating from coffins, low-budget coffins. True. Right. My uh, hearse is named Patty. She's very reliable. And if you... There's a pun there. Is there? Yes. She just yeah. looked like a Patty to me. Right. right. Uh, stopping it's a in Patty traffic, wagon. She, well, of course she is. Black, well, she's not a black Mariah. She's a, a blue-gray Mariah, but uh, yes. Very nice. Yes, and how many, how many of the bereaved can you fit in with a body? Uh, the bereaved, let's see. I only have a front seat, so oh, I that's can fit it. two small people in, and if somebody wants people. to lie right. down with the coffin, that would be three. 
they could they could sort of keep it in place. Correct. Right. 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 I've actually, only one coffin fits. Right. That's correct. Unless it's um, unfortunately a small person's coffin. Oh. No, I've been in the back of that hearse, and when the door shuts, you can't get out. Oh, there's, there's no, no handle on the inside. Well, I, I, I suppose it'd be a waste of money for a dead person to try to... Unless this is a zombie. True. All right, we're getting silly. What do you say we get back to this film? <laughs> Certainly. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the actual undertaking process. Very good. All right. Off we go to the Neptune Factor. Please don't go away, because things are going to get fun, right? I hope so. All right, so I do, do I. remember some fun scenes. All right, off we go. Back to Neptune Factor. See you soon. One more night in the Hoosco, Lord. One more night to go. Same old headache, Dave? Uh, yeah. Must be quite a mind bend. You know, you've popped your weight in aspirin since your tour began? Dave. It's like having a one-man plague. I keep wanting to ask, has anybody noticed how slimy the walls are? The place seems to be getting smaller all the time. <laughs> I can remember when claustrophobia used to be just a word. It didn't beat you. You fought this one to a standstill. I'll talk to Dr. Andrews and get him to line up for a replacement. You can surface right away. Some of the stuff I tried, you know? Transcendental meditation, deep breathing exercises, even prayer. Oh, well. At least I never once asked to be sent up, huh? And don't think that won't go into my report. Contact. The umbilical cable snapped. Oh, no. Two men surfacing. Thomas and Stephen. Oh, my God. Attention, Mr. Pope. Launch the dory. Circle and surge. Two divers were surfacing. Aye, aye, sir. Urgent all divers. Suit up immediately. Repair ship to Ocean Lab umbilical line. What's this all about, Doc? We've lost contact with the Ocean Lab. There's been an earthquake. We're going back down. Check us out. You're not ready yet. Oh, the hell we're not. I'm going to. Leah, Leah, listen to me. It's too dangerous without propulsion beams. Mr. Thorpe. Hal and I have been a team from the very beginning. My dear, I know how well, you feel, but... Well, then you know but... why I can't see project stay engineers up. McKay and Cousins are going down, too. Assign all three to one team. Careful you don't go too deep. Thanks, Max. Divers away. Aye, aye, sir. Get 
Like more divers over. Pass. Aye, aye, sir. Shooting up now. Pieces of the habitat, the pressure chamber, anything from inside. Pieces of fairing, anchor cables, some surveying gear, nothing from inside so far. Any signs of a hatch? A, a, a broken port? No. It's as if the entire ocean lab was swept away. I'm going to go deeper and check. Newfoundland, sir. Send a Mayday, Briggs. Advise Halifax we've lost Ocean Lab. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Halifax, this is Triton, Whiskey, Zulu, Quebec, 8871, over. Mayday, 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 Halifax, this is Triton. Tidal wave, affirmative. This is Glace Bay. Mayday, Mayday, tidal, tidal wave. wave. affirmative. We have a cruiser arriving Sydney 06 2300, over. Lieutenant, we've got a mayday from the Triton now. Go ahead, Triton. This is Halifax Bay Officer. Over. Halifax, this is Triton. We're at fixed position at latitude 35 degrees 45 minutes north, longitude 57 degrees 40 minutes west. We've experienced undersea earthquake and have lost contact with Ocean Lab. Repeat, have lost contact with Ocean Lab. Divers unable to locate. Over. You are over Muir Seamount. How far down was your equipment? Less than 250 feet, right on top of the guy. Now, we must have submersible rescue craft. Ocean Lab has rescue hatches. Over. Yes, sir. But if she was thrown eastward by the quake, you could be in serious trouble. She could have gone into the abyss. That's inaccessible. Or imploded. We think our sea lab is intact. They've only got breathing mix for seven days. Repeat, seven days. Left if they panic. Over. Captain, you've got to understand our problem. All ships in this area are on rescue service. What about the company that made sea lab? They must have other submersibles that could help. Good thought. We'll contact them. Lieutenant? Hold on. Captain, submarine Onondaga is available and proceeding to you. They just picked up your mayday. This is Triton. Roger. Good man. Send him along as fast as you can. Over and out.
gone too deep, Doctor. Leah. Leah, listen to me. You are below your pressure limit. She's getting narcosis. Where are the companion divers? Leah, Leah, now listen to me. You are too deep. Swim up. Up. <laughs> This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Livingston, do you know that we could drill our own water well using this device? For sale in TV Guide. We have a well. But we can have another. Why? What if this one runs dry? What if she is, she, she takes an hour shower. An right? Hour. No. Deep Rock Manufacturing in Opelika, Alabama makes it. And then we can send a dollar just for information. Huh. I wonder if they have a website. We'll see. Anyways. Welcome back to the show. It is time for us to do some mail because uh, he's standing here and he's yes. holding mail and you sent it to us. So the two combine and it becomes the mail segment, right? Right. Right. What do you got? Janice Shepherd from Scotland. Janice Shepherd from... Oh, I like the way she spells Janice. It's with a U. Never seen that. All right. Jan and and Sh Shep... Sh is that Shepherd? Shepard. Well, if you look at the Oh, all right, right. Now I see it. All right. Uh, hi from uh, Ashaya in Scotland. My husband, Tom, and I love your show. As Tom is now disabled, he spends most days watching or catching up on old creature feature films. Today we watched The Bat, a great old black and white. You like that film too, don't it's you? It's a classic. Right, right. Would love to see more... Uh, shows like this if possible. Many thanks, Janice. Well, thank you, Janice. Um, send our regards to Tom. And we've got a couple of good old black and white films coming up, right, on the schedule. Yes. I noticed this, right? So yes. maybe maybe these two. And they're where? Some Scotland? Scotland. Scotland. 
bloody well Scotland. How, how are they receiving us in Scotland? They must have a large aerial on their roof. They have a computer. Oh. All right. Well, I don't know how that works, but... Next up, Mr. Livingston. This is from Buda, Texas. There's a place called Buda, Texas. Different spelling. There is, but it's still Buda, Texas. And this is Gina Rentero. We've heard from Gina before. I don't Which, recall. Oh, no, she always gives us these decorative envelopes. Hmm. Right, look at this. Yeah, she put lots of stamps on. I, I don't know. Oh, look, it says, hi, Tangela. Hi, Mr. Livingston. And look, she sketched Tangela. Look at you. Tangela's not as dainty as you drew her, Gina. But, uh, oh, my goodness, look at this. Vincent Van, I look like a glam rock star, don't I? Indeed. Isn't that great? Does this look like me? You think so? She put no letter. All right. No letter needed. She drew a photo. This is, this is nice. You know, this is the way I used to look. Yes. And I, Long I ago. kind of look like that now, too, as well. Right? Somewhat. Very nicely done, Gina. Thank you. Next up. Oh, we my goodness. My goodness, Mr. Livingston. from Reno, Nevada. Reno. I like Reno. Did we win at the slots or something? I don't recall. All right. Well, uh, let's do this. Uh, why don't you put it on her lap and give me the letter? It's heavy. Oh, look at this. Nice letter. In script. It is in script. Oh, my goodness. This is, this is a long letter. It's a book. All right. Oh, here's some German. This is German. This is for you to read. I thought it would be. All right, well, hold on to this. Let me read this part first. All right. Dear Vincent, Tangela, and Livingston, we are Arno and Claudia from Reno, Nevada. We want to say how grateful we both were to find your show. My hubby told me stories about watching Creature Features since he was nine years old living in Fairfield, California. Staying up late to see Bob Wilkins smoking a cigar on Channel 2 KTVU. Now he's 55 years old, and he has been collecting retro movies for the last 30 years such as uh, adventures, westerns, sci-fi, and many more genres, especially horror films. We love everything about your show. Vincent, your host role is impeccable. Did you hear that? Yes, indeed. Don't be sarcastic when you say yes, indeed. Never. Tangela is adorable, mischievous, and wicked. A great combination for an evil little girl. Livingston is always attentive to details. You just have to be a little nicer to sweet Angela when she comes to share her terrifying toys. After some family deliberations, we want you to enjoy some special gifts that we are sending you with this letter. For Vincent, rocker boots. Oh, dear. Those are awesome. Those are, are, they're, you know, you cannot find these anymore. These are incredible. These are actual rocker boots. Well, what size? Let's see. Give me a moment. All right. Uh, for your pagan nights of fun. Ten. Ten? Ten European. No, European 44. Oh, no, that sounds right. Mm. Uh, Livingston, it took us a little longer to decide on a personal gift that we think you might enjoy, so the leather cap is for you. A leather cap? So it would appear. I don't think I've ever seen you wear a leather chapeau before. I don't have any. Show us... Oh, there we go. Yes. No, that's so you. He has, a, he has something similar made of tweed. Right? Tweed. Very nice. All right, here we go. I like it. Do you, you look like you're ready to ride a bicycle or a horse? Or... I'll have to look in the mirror Go later. bet at the races. All right. For the Mistress Tangela, the cute skull pajama is the perfect outfit for your dark and naughty nights. We also think the little skull incense holder is a good choice for your voodoo practices. Hmm. When uh, you're upset with Andrew, yes, the needles are included. P.S. Since my husband discovered you on YouTube channel, we watch your shows every day after work. And on the weekends, all day, it's Creature Feature Marathon. Well, these, we, we've got some dedicated people in, in, in Nevada. Uh, let's see, yours truly, Arno and Claudia Kuntz uh, in uh, Reno, Nevada. Very nice. This is so nice. Oh, what? what? Oh, Vincent. 
Oh, it's port. port. I love port. Yes, you do. No, it's not. And that's a good one, too. I've, I've had this one. Sandeman. Really cool. It's quite nice. Very nice. All right. Well, I will save that for a special occasion. Thank you so it is much. A Founders Reserve. This uh, German letter, what does it say? You don't have to read it. Just tell us basically the gist. She was raised in Austria. Her mother is, comes from Germany, Permisens in the Faults. She wanted to know what, she, what Bundesstate that I come from and uh, Bavaria. And uh, He should work for the United Nations because he could translate letters. And he hopes that uh, we all get together sometime because that would be very special. For, for Oktoberfest? But, well, not there. She wants to come here. Oh, all right. <laughs> all right. Well, for Oktoberfest. We for have October it here, too. We have it here. Is that well. it for mail? That's it for mail. That is it for mail. If you would like to send us mail of your own, go to hellocreaturefeatures.com and you can find out how to send us a nice package of gifts or how to send us an email or how to send a large sum of cash using an armored vehicle and armed guards, right? No. All right. Well, the other two are true. So, uh, anyway, so we're going to get back to the Neptune Factor, and when we return, I will have the Undertaker in that seat instead of the uh, Underachiever. See you soon. Halifax, this is Onondaga. Over. Onondaga. This is Halifax. Go ahead. Go ahead together. Captain. Area of seamount unstable. Aftershocks frequent. No signal or pinger detected in uh, 42 hours of search. Magnetometer's negative, bottom scanner's negative. You have traversed the severe seamount how many times now? This will be coming up to three full passes. All that's left is to start down into the trough. Negative. The area is too unstable. Starboard three. Oh, I'm sorry, Doug. Come in, man. Come in. Thank you. I uh, guess dozing, I guess. <laughs> Waiting to sure heaven. <sighs> Coffee, Doc? No, I I don't think so. Thank you, Mac. I've got Triton. We've completed our search. Results negative after four days, 11 hours. We requested permission to leave the area. We regret having been unable to help you. We think Neptune 2 is better equipped as a search vessel. We hope it arrives soon. Wish you the best of luck. Best of luck to you too, Captain. We thank you. You did all you could.
Welcome to Canada, Commander Blake. Ex-Commander. <laughs> Haven't had a uniform on in four years. Well, I'm Norton Shepard, Triton Enterprises. Uh, no coat? I left it at home in Atlanta. How is it down there? Warmer. <laughs> well, we'd be flown to the disaster site. Uh -huh. Neptune's on its way. Yeah, well, I hope those people on the Triton aren't expecting any miracle. Ah, but they are. Ah, uh, this is very bad timing, Mr. Shepard. Why, is something wrong? Well, the Neptune has had a complete overhaul, but hasn't had a sea trial yet. Well, I'll tell you, if it does spring a leak, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> well, when you're working a mile down, you don't spring a leak, Mr. Shepard. You implode. No survivors, no remains. up to the yacht club in that. Hmm. At 20 meters, there is considerable debris here at the lab site. Now, our divers have been as deep as equipment permitted, and the Navy submarine has worked the slope of the seamount to uh, 500 meters. Our problem is strictly one of time. If the pressure hull is still intact, there's life support remaining, all I'd say for just under 48 hours. Doctor, I'm sure this has occurred to all of you, but uh, if someone were still alive in the ocean lab, wouldn't he have activated a ping up? Uh, may I answer that, Dr. Andrews? Please do, Leo. Commander, because of its size, the Navy sub couldn't possibly have cruised low enough to see if the lab had fallen into a fissure or a deep growth. As for a pinger, we all know that sound underwater is scattered by obstacles by fish, by rocks, by plankton. And in spite of what you see here, the top of the sea mount is really very rugged. I'm aware of all that, Doctor. Commander, your submersible can cruise into areas that sub could never go. If your ocean lab did go into the trench, no ordinary pinger would be operative at that uh, pressure. But we have no proof either way. As long as that clock says there's still hope, we've got to try it. We have 47 hours, 51 minutes, 26 seconds. No argument, Doctor. We'll try, all right. But just for the record, the purpose of this dive is to find and photograph proof of the loss of the environmental structure or the insurance underwriter. Good God, man. There are three men down there who may still be alive. Now, let's get our priorities in order. Oh, come. The Neptune has not had a sea trial since its overhaul. There's also a danger of aftershocks, landslides. Now, I don't know your three friends. But I will know the men who are diving with me in the Neptune, and they are my responsibility. And whenever there's a choice, their safety comes first. Now, Captain, I would like to meet my crew. Excuse me. Ready to hoist.
Hello, this is Mr. Livingston. It would appear that I have been tasked yet again to deliver another plea intended to separate you from your hard-earned money. This program now has its own channel and associated apps that allow you to watch the entire Creature Features library and much more. Entitled Creature Features TV, this is a system that works much like Netflix or Hulu. Besides early access to all the new Creature Features episodes, you'll also have access to many other offerings and some archival episodes of the original show with Mr. Bob Wilkins. You'll also have exclusive access to a new Creature Features show that will be introduced soon and will not be available anywhere else. Your generous but modest monthly subscription fee will also greatly assist in the continued production of the show, so there's that as well. Miss Tangela has asked me to inform you that if you subscribe to Creature Features TV, she will be sure to create more dancing videos just for you. I think not. So please visit www.creaturefeaturestv.com to learn more. Thank you for your time. We all live in a yellow submarine, a yellow submarine. A ye I could not live in a submarine. I've been in a submarine, but it was moored. It's right, no, so have I, and yeah. that's fine. But imagine going into all that no. water. No, it's not for me. It's like being in a coffin, is it not? Uh, it is very much like being in a coffin. The water would be the dirt. Very difficult to that's dig right. yourself out of a right. submarine. Exactly. Coffins are fairly yeah. easy to dig yourself out of if you know how. Which We're going to get to that. But first, uh, welcome back to the show. We are watching The Neptune Factor with The Undertaker. 1973, not a bad film. So, um, earthquakes, undersea earthquakes. I mean, shouldn't they call that a water quake or a sea quake or an ocean quake? Right. Um, actually, it's, they have a evacuation route along the Embarcadero in San Francisco if there's an earthquake because they tsunami. would have a tsunami. Tsunami, That's right. it. It's right. a tsunami. But no, so on the earth, you have an earthquake, and under the ocean, you have an ocean quake. That's correct. Or well, something like that. I don't know. I'm not a geologist. Just but I could have been. I could have been once, maybe, never. I don't know. Uh, enough about this. Let's talk about undertaking. So somebody dies, and they come to you. No. Somebody dies and their family comes to you and says, please undertake this person of ours. Correct. What's the next step? Well, when I started, we would put somebody in what they called a carrying basket and have a small ceremony in the parlor of their house. The wake. Exactly. Right, because you don't want to bury a living person. Right, that's why they buried people with a rope in their hand and a bell above where the uh, tombstone was, just in case. Even if they had a wake? Even if they had a wake. Oh, my goodness. Well, isn't the purpose of the wake, though, to leave the body until it's so obviously dead? Right. Before you bury it? Right. And when I started, there was no formaldehyde, so the wake oh, had to Lord. be within three days. Oh. Or two days if it was a hot day. Oh, my goodness. Now, I'm sure you've noticed, like in the Poulter Mansion, right by the front door on the porch, there's a window that goes all the way down to the porch. Right. What is that window? It's called a coffin wake or a coffin window. And oh, that's I never knew how this. they brought the bodies in and out of the parlor during a funeral service. Why not through the front door? Because it was considered uh, bad luck. Because oh. the spirit of the, the person might stay in the house through the front door. Also, when they brought the body out of the house, it had to be feet first. Oh. And when they had the ceremony or the wake, they had to put all the pictures of the family, lay it down so the 
spirit of the uh, person would not inhabit the photos. They had to put black crepe over the mirrors. This sounds like Middle Ages type tradition. And you're you're talking about Victorian age. They would do this. People still do it, however. Really? The traditions don't die out very quickly. Well, I know, I know some places they cover the mirrors for some reason. That is true. Right, right. They, they put curtains uh, in the room where the funeral is happening so the spirit would not escape during the uh, wake. Yeah, spirits, I mean, if they can't go through a curtain, how do they go through a wall? Uh, that's a training, actually. Oh. They, they, they have to learn that. There is a book There's that a they get in the There's a science to all this. There, there must be a science. There must be, like, scientific measurements taken. All right, what do you say we get back to the undersea world? And then when we come back, we'll get back to the Undertaker world. Wonderful. All right, off we go. Neptune fact in 1973. Don't miss the next part because I hear it's good, maybe. Helium oxygen mixer. Helium oxygen mixer, check. Lighting control circuit. Lighting control circuit, check. Seamount coming up. I want to see if I can get some pictures. Holding a dead slow. Neptune and Triton, Neptune and Triton, come in, please. Come in back. Uh, we're approaching the site, Dr. Andrews. We're starting to take photographs. That site was damn close to that slope. It's almost as though somebody was looking for trouble. We were looking for trouble. Believe it or not, we were trying to determine what causes earthquakes. Hmm. Plus the full ecology shtick. Biological research, sediment sampling. Test and evaluation of navigation and homing devices, deep water fishing and farming, full-scale housing. Because all God's children got to have food and a place to live. Cruising at 100 meters. Cruising. 100 meters. Right now. Log time and depth as he gives it. I see. Now, Mr. Shepard, I'll show you just about where they are now. They're getting nearer here. Descending, Dr. Andrews. Three knots. Neptune to 
Triton. Neptune to Triton, do you hear? Over. You lost contact. Neptune, do you hear me? Sharp aftershock. Mac, cousins, come in. Neptune to Triton, do you hear me? Over. He's not any. Not yet. Order them up. Move port thruster. Move port thruster. How's she handling? Can't get her away from that damn cliff. He's back on the port thruster. He's in back on the port thruster. Neptune a Triton, Neptune a Triton, come in, please. Neptune a Triton, Nep. Oh, come on, fellas, get off the line, will you? A gone fish. Leah! Hello, repeat. Is that you, Mac? Yeah, this is Mac. We're doing just fine. Excuse me. Commander Blake. Blake here. 350 meters. Surveying slope. Over. Dr. Andrews expects more aftershocks, some severe. Strongly recommend you surface. Over. Repeat. Suggest you abort the dive. Over. Negative. We've just gone through a river of sand. Avoiding cliffs and danger spots. I'm continuing the dive. Thanks, Skipper. No gung-ho gesture intended, gentlemen. I want to find what I came for. But if this dive gets any stickier, I'll abort it fast. You can count on it. <laughs> Hey, Skipper, can you hold it here? I think I picked up something. Come here, will you? Hold it on 153. I'm going to go out and take a look. Right. It's metal, all right. It's below us. And maybe a little to port, Matt. OK. We're locked on it.
Yeah, I see him. Junkyard. Brighton, this is Neptune. Do you hear me? Go ahead, Neptune. Yes, we hear you. We are discontinuing our search. your message. Vincent, this is Verna from Santa Rosa, California. I just logged on to your Creature Feature TV app, and I love it because you have closed captioning on it. I'm very happy to pay that $7.99 a month for it. Keep doing the good job. Bye. Creature Feature Night, and you are with us because you're wonderful. One, more wonderful than me. We've got The Undertaker. I, you know, it's not too often we have an actual Undertaker sitting in that chair, so it's, it's, it's nice to have you. Uh, on this film, quickly, Neptune Factor. Do you know that they had 40 consultants, technical people, give them advice on this film? Very surprising, considering the uh, quality of the film. It's enjoyable, but I didn't see... But is it technically accurate? I would hope so. One uh, would think, if they spent that kind of money on consultants. It, it was a big budget film. Right. Unless the co consultants are like friends of the director, friends and family. Oh, oh yes. You know what? You could come consult and you could make a little Added bit of money. Added the budget, I right. see, yes. Yeah, yeah, who knows, who knows. Anyways... Uh, we were chatting over the film, and you mentioned this whole thing about Victorian death photos. Right. Tell me all about this. Well, uh, back in the era when uh, those were common, uh, it was so well, expensive. What is it? What is it? Well, it was so expensive to take photos that sometimes the only photo they had of a family member was in death. So they didn't want to present a photo of somebody in death. They tried to make them look like they were live. They would use something to keep the eyes open, oh uh, change the expression, which they did with a piece of wire. And you it, said that they made like a frame to hold them up. Yes. They also used that for Imagine. living people so they wouldn't move and blur the photo because they had long exposure. Right. Now, that makes sense. But 
why do they have to worry about a, a dead person moving? Not, well, moving as far as gravity pulling them down. Oh, right, because dead people can't stand like a Gumby doll. Right. And right. generally, if, when they took those type of photos, there was a living person sitting with the dead person, and they were very close together so the living oh. person can prop them up. Oh, that must have smelt horrible. Considering all the lighting they needed in the studio, oh, I would say yes. Goodness. So when did, when did this atrocity stop? It stopped around the time that they uh, had um, uh, high-speed cameras, so it, probably around oh, the 1920s, right. actually. All right, 1920s. Now, they, they replaced that with gangsters, with Tommy guns. Correct. Interesting. All right, well, what do you say? We get back to this film, and uh, when we come back, I want to hear about this thing about you being a minister. Certainly. All right, off we go back to the Neptune Factor Please don't go away because if you if you do, I'll be sad. He probably won't be, but I'll be sad. So try to keep me happy, eh? I will try again tomorrow. Shouldn't take no more than 10, 12 hours to recharge our batteries. Negative. All we can do now is go deeper. How do you think we would have stood up under that sand avalanche with another 500 feet of water on top of us? Yeah, but that was in that narrow canyon. The farther out we go in the trench... The less there is to see. Unless you look straight down. And I'm afraid that's just where the ocean lab is. If it's that far down, it's imploded. Sorry, gentlemen. That's it. Triton, this is Neptune. Stand by. We have extremely low battery voltage. What time do you estimate breaking surface? We are on auxiliary batteries now. Estimate surfacing. 33 minutes, sir. 33 minutes. Hold it down. Listen to that. An echo, Mr. McKay. Inversion layer. No, not on this wavelength, Commander. And not on a keel fixed transponder. I am familiar with the equipment, Mr. McKay. I supervise its installation. Well, good. Then I can talk in shorthand. We're going up, right? Right. Inversion layers are fixed. Listen to that. There is no Doppler effect. Triton, this is Neptune. I am halting the ascent for further investigation. We'll advise. In view of your power situation, suggest you... We'll advise. It's something. I don't know, it's awfully weak. Six sets of conditions that could create that sound. All of them natural, none man made. Yeah, but you heard it too, Commander. Mac, take a look down here. Those imprints in the sand. By the sea growth, you see it? Bring it around the port a little, will you? There it is coming up there now. Look at the imprints in the sand. You've had an earthquake, Mr. McKay. Yeah, but it could have been made by the ocean land. I am running out of time and power and patience. Now we are resuming our set. Pictures, then. I'll circle once and then surface. You better take them on the run, mister. Activate that. There. There, now those markings could have been made by the ocean lab. The lab slid by that area, it would have left far more disturbance than that. Look there. 
flora not found at that depth. I believe it's a species of macrocystis we were cultivating at the Ocean Lab site. I believe you're right, Leah. There's no other way that specimen could get there unless the Ocean Lab dragged it. Now, take a good look at that rock wall. Vertical. And what do you think would happen if we close on that wall during another aftershock? We've got friends down there. Any risk is worthwhile, and we're running out of time. Panic and time are inseparables, Doctor. Now, why don't you try looking at this situation with a scientific detachment? with Dr. Hamilton. Is that correct? Yes, Commander, that is correct. And so much for your scientific detachment. There is a way of going down that would uh, lessen the danger, if you'll agree. You could dive tethered using the bridle and cable. Oh, tethered, like a dog on a leash. It would cut way down on our range. Well, you can see a long way through those ports. It's better than nothing. Oh. You wanted insurance. Now you've got it. There's plenty of cable. The equipment's good, so there's no problem. All right. To the end of the cable. I want someone on board who can make an accurate scientific evaluation of that damn piece of seaweed. Dr. Jensen is the authority in that field. <laughs> I would have bet on it. Neptune to Triton? 
We have nothing on the bottom or the side scanners, Dr. Andrews. Over. Understand your search is negative. Over. I heard it again. Did you hear that, Dr. Andrews? You probably picked up the thin beam of a scattered sound. No, it's the pinger, I'm sure. Well, what about the visual, the, uh, the bottom, the displaced growth? Not a thing, nothing yet. Uh, Leah, take a look at this. Now, that growth right down there, you see it? I can't tell from here. Let's move closer. Oh, no, we're at the end of our cable now. Isn't there any way to get in so I can get a better look? And if you did make a positive identification, what would that prove? That somebody passed this area on the way down. Down is a hell of a long way. You're quitting. We made an agreement, we struck out. Get your hands away from me! Power point, main power stopper. Full stop and thruster. Full stop and thruster. Running the port power tank. Power pressure's okay. Full port thruster. Full port thruster. Running the main starboard power tank. Going in the even keel. Port and starboard thruster's full. lady you know what the pressure is at this depth and do you know what could have happened if we'd gone deeper we would have been crushed like an egg oh come on skipper we're loose now the hell with playing it safe goofs we have had it understood <laughs> Neptune to Triton I have released the cable I'm investigating further hello this is mr. Livingston it would appear I have been tasked with requesting you to help our show financially by visiting our patron page. Your generosity will help us keep Creature Features on the air. With only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new entertainment for your viewing pleasure each and every week. And if you have the desire to give more, you might even receive a gift from Tangela. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. Why, why do I have to wear a blindfold and be tied up just to get a, a beard trim and a haircut? Huh? I've never had to do that when I go down to the village. They don't do that. They, they, they sit you right down and then, is this something new that they do in Paris? What's, go, what's going on? I don't get it. Could you tell me? Not tell today. Me Hello? Tangela, could you tell me what's going on? Ow! Thanks, Pat. Dr. Jens. Yes. Is this 
close enough for you. It's my poor sisters, I'm certain. Look at that. That ocean lab must have gone down into that fissure. I think we better go down and have a look before that seawall winds up in our lap. second pulse. Very narrow band. I'm sure it's the pinger. right off at the top. Hovering. Back it over here. What's the matter? Help me out with these controls. Hey, we're caught in a current. I never felt one of this depth before. It's a pingo, all right. 
and it's on automatic. Where the hell are they? In all my days of diving, I've never seen anything like this. size of this stuff. Light is iridescent. At this depth, that's phenomenal. find that sound again. Why, hell, that puts them less than 300 meters away from us. Anything on the bottom scanner? Bottom scanner's negative. What about sonar? Variable. Nothing. Not a trace. We've only got about two hours' life support left. hope. activity deep down. Hmm. Maybe that explains the size of that stuff out there.
portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. I... What is going on with the special effects? It looks to me like they filmed in a fish tank. They did film in a fish tank. It, it, looks, it looks like the tank down at the restaurant, the seafood restaurant, and they just put a little submarine. Hey, maybe that was in the budget to take everybody out to eat and they filmed at the same time. No, I think, I think you're, you're onto something with a budget. I think they ran out of money. Considering that they spent it all on consultants, they probably did. No, they probably spent it all on Yvette Mimieux. I would. No, but uh, that's not passable special effects. Even me, who knows nothing about special effects, can tell that was poorly done. All right, uh, we're going to wrap up this film soon, and hopefully they found some more money to do it right. But uh, we are with The Undertaker, if you're just joining us. If you are just joining us, I, I don't know why. You, 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 could, you should be watching Monty Python or something. But uh, you were telling me that... You're an ordained minister. That is correct. I've oh. been an ordained minister for several years now. I'm a member of a religion called the uh, Flying Spaghetti Monster, which is an organized religion, everyone. And I was ordained as a minister. I can legally marry people, and I can legally bury people and give them a service. So I get you on both ends, folks. So this marrying of people, I, how many times have you been married? Um... Myself, uh, we won't go into that, but how many times have I married people uh, since... Uh, oh, as a verb. Yes, all as right. a verb. No, all right. I yes, um, a half a dozen so far. My goodness. And some so, of them have been in cemeteries is at night. spaghetti served at this event? At one of them. One was a luau. One oh. was a barbecue. One was a buffet. Uh, one was Italian, of course. And um, they were all outdoors. And I try to uh, encourage people to get married in their local cemetery because the atmosphere is quite lively for such a cold and, uh, and uh, dreary place. I find right, but your spaghetti thing. I, yes. I would think that someone ordained, and what, what's it called again? The Flying Spaghetti Monster. Religion. Correct. Would require at least one bowl of spaghetti for any religious event, does it not? It does, and people wear colanders on their heads to signify their devotion to the spaghetti monster. And when they have events, they wear pirate outfits because it's related to uh, piracy. You're a bit of a silly man, are you not? Uh, it's, I've been told that I am. I, I kind of look silly from I what people tell me. I would think you would be like part of some more traditional religion, like... I don't know, the, 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 those guys with the bald heads. I wish I could tell you I was, because uh, they wouldn't have me. Oh, but the spaghetti Right, I didn't think did. this up. This is an organized okay. religion, All right. but they accepted me, and I am a minister in that religion. And are you good at cooking spaghetti? Fair. All right. I'm better at making sauce. All right, all right. On that uh, prego note, let's wrap up this film. Neptune Factor, 1973. When we come back, we'll have Tangela sitting right here. So when you see those credits roll, don't do the thing where you go, good night, goodbye, because Tangela will be here. And you know what she'll do if they leave before she arrives? She'll be angry. She'll take down names and numbers and addresses, Ooh. and you might get a gift in the mail. So stick around. Let's finish up this film. And when we come back, we're going to find out what The Undertaker is doing next, right? Certainly. All yes, right. I will. Off we go to the end of the Neptune Factor. See you soon. There's something we ought to be thinking about. When are we going to be willing to call it quits? We got 90 minutes battery power left. We're going to need half of that to get to the surface. Let's go to the limit. No 
que Hold it right here. Holding. Magnetic reading, metal object right below us. You want to take over, Skipper, or go out and take a look, see? Yeah, we'll right. I've got it, too. And it's close. Smack. Watch yourself. There's some big game out there. Just keep that hatch close. sign of it? Nothing. See that? What, Mac? Never mind. Hey, Bob. This piece is definitely off the ocean lab. Looks like a piece of fairing off an outside locker. We're getting out of here. Man your station. Anything? No, sir. Are you sure you know how to work that bloody thing? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, lad. Sorry. Damn it. figures, they've just run out of life support in the ocean lab. Oh, I pray to God I'm wrong.
get out of here, boy. Hold on. Give it all you got. Full thrust up. from that port. Get over, get over. Don't move. Stay away, man. Stay away. Get out of here. Get on. Think we should move on? No, 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 no. Don't move it. You ram us for sure. Settles on an even keel. Matt, give me a hand here. What's that noise? Catfish. We're in a school of them. Looks like the voltage regulator's gone. It's one of the ICs. Got a spare? Component box.
This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Stay tuned. power left. I'm sorry, but we have to surface. Let's take her upstairs. Listen. That's got to be close. Let's go get him. Ocean lab. It has to be. I hope so too. Draw them off. Cousins.
Wait, Skipper. Yes, sir. And that brings the submarine lid down on the Neptune factor. What'd you think, love? She doesn't like the happy endings. You know, if the, the blokes in the in the C Lab thing had died, she she would have been happy. Mm. No, that's why she is. Anyways, uh, not a bad film, not a great film, but uh, you know, it was the seventies. Things were different back then. They would they would stick plastic submarines in fish tanks and call it special effects. I know I did. No, that's what it is. All right, well, what, what do you got going on next, Mr. Undertaker? A ceremony coming up very soon at the midnight, actually. A midnight wedding, I take it. Correct. Nice, nice. And who? What? What type of person gets married at midnight? Uh, well, a night owl, of course, right. but uh, somebody who likes the night and uh, doesn't want to be seen in the, the daytime, like myself. Oh, maybe they have a skin condition that prevents the sun. Right, like the skin right. bubbling when the sun comes up, that does happen. You know, I've seen this happen before. It's, it's, it's a grisly sight. It is. Good, so you're keeping busy with the undertaking, Very you're keeping much. busy with the, with the officiation. That is true. Right, right, and... Uh, you watch creature features in your spare time, right? Oh, spare time. All I'm time. Uh, embalming people while I watch creature features. That's the best thing. You know, I think a lot of our viewers are embalming people as well as they watch our show. I wouldn't blame them if they did. It's a fun hobby, actually. Right, right. So how do we find out more about Mr. Undertaker? I have a Facebook page, everyone. Dig the Undertaker. Just go to Dig the Undertaker and anywhere on the internet we can find you. That is correct. Dig the Undertaker. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Undertaker, for coming um, to see us once again. Thank you for having me. And we hope to see you again soon. And uh, you stay out of trouble. Be careful. Don't bury someone who's not dead. It's illegal. I've heard that. Right. As far as you guys go, thank you so much for watching our program instead of Monty Python on Channel 9. You know, they are funnier than us. But we're newer, slightly, so much. She is. She's fresher than Monty Python. I may not be, but she is. But uh, well, join us next week because we're going to have another guest, uh, another movie. I, I don't know uh, what's going to be what, but uh, it should be fun. And uh, don't forget, we love you. See you next time. So, uh, Mr. Undertaker, you know, the fact that you do weddings is, is rather amazing to me. I'm thinking once I finally marry her off, maybe you'd officiate the wedding. Hmm. I don't think so. But when the time comes, 
I would be happy to officiate at your funeral. <laughs>